Hello everyone, I'm back. It feels like it's been a while, hasn't been that long. Being about two weeks, I think, feels longer. But I had to come back to talk about the announcement of the host city for 2024. I was away on the day that it was revealed, so I couldn't film a video on that day. So I wanted to do it as soon as I could to talk about the host city, which is Malmö. We are going back to Malmö, like we said before. When Lorene wins, we go to Malmö. <laughs> it's happened twice. So 2012, Lorene wins for Sweden. The year after that, it was in Malmö. And the same thing has happened yet again. Exactly the same. We're going back to Malmö, taking Lorene <laughs> with us. So it's the third time, yeah, the third time that Malmö have hosted. There was 1992. I think, the year that Linda Martin won it for Ireland, and then of course 2013, Emily de Forest, and now again next year. I wonder if maybe Denmark will win it again. Same thing, repeat to 2013. <laughs> I mean, the way that Denmark are going at the moment in Eurovision, I can't really picture Denmark winning right now, but you know, never know, it could happen. So we talked about in my last video about how quickly and how early this whole Swedish host city process has taken. A lot earlier than we're used to and definitely a lot quicker than we're used to. We normally wait until September for the host city announcement and that was happening in July. Liverpool felt like it happened a week ago. <laughs> it feels like I've still only just come back from Liverpool. It was two months ago, which isn't that long at all. And yet already we know who is hosting next year and when. 11th of May is the final. And not only did the whole thing happen very quickly, but there also wasn't really much of a build-up or a build-up of excitement and information leading up to the process at all, which sometimes we do get. Because I remember, well, last year in the UK, or well, this year, technically, when we <laughs> hosted, which I still can't believe happened, I remember there was a lot of build-up. There was the shortlist of about seven cities in the UK at first, and then it was narrowed down to two cities, Liverpool or Glasgow. And then the actual announcement of Liverpool was actually revealed live on TV, on the BBC. So there was a huge build-up of excitement towards the whole process, and we knew a lot about it beforehand. That definitely hasn't happened this year with Sweden at all. And in the past, I remember with Rotterdam, I remember Duncan Lawrence doing like a promotional video between Rotterdam and Maastricht, I think it was. Maybe not so much with Italy, there wasn't that much promotion for it, but for Liverpool there definitely was. I don't know about other years in the past, but this year with Sweden, it was all very quick. We didn't get much of, like I say, like a build-up of content apart from speculation and rumours, really. And there was definitely a lot of that going on with the fans and with the media. And talking about the speculation and the whole discussion around it that's been going on in between me and now, I remember all the way back at the start of this whole host city bidding process, I made a video actually quite a while ago now, a few weeks ago, talking about the host city, but that was before we knew more information. Because at the start, I think a lot of people thought it would be Stockholm. That was more of the favoured and preferred city, seemed like the obvious choice. They had the Friends Arena, the other arena, and they were actually planning on building a temporary arena just for Eurovision next year on the harbour, I think. So I think Stockholm is what people expected and wanted. 
but and there was also Malmö and Gothenburg were pretty much the only other main options really so it was always between those three officially but we talked about all of that before the Stockholm bid became very complex and there were a lot of issues surrounding it first of all especially with Taylor Swift so not long ago we found out that Taylor Swift was doing a show in the Friends Arena on the 17th of May and that completely changed everything it became a huge problem because you couldn't do it in the, in the Friends Arena that week but not just that week even if they tried doing it the week before you'd still need to take down the stage and then put up the Taylor Swift stage. You know, it's just a lot of work. And Stockholm is a city. It would just be so busy having those two huge events, Eurovision and Taylor Swift, going on at the same time. So that did become a big problem for Stockholm. And I think it was the fact as well that the the planned temporary arena they were thinking of building. I think it was too expensive and too much of an effort, really. You know, I mean, you think you shouldn't really have to build <laughs> a temporary venue, although I know in the past they have, like with Copenhagen 2014. I think they built something especially for that. So yeah, the last video that I made talking about the host city was done before we knew all about that, before the whole Taylor Swift scenario. And then it became clear to everyone that actually maybe it won't be Stockholm because it looks like it's all turned a bit problematic, a bit too complex for it to be in Stockholm. So then people thought, well, actually, it will either be Malmö or Gothenburg. And it turns out that, oh, it seems like Malmö was the safest and easiest option of the three because Gothenburg always had that problem with the arena the arena I think was quite old and also I think the roof wasn't suitable for a Eurovision venue so if it didn't have that problem it would be quite nice to have it in Gothenburg I think but they obviously couldn't get past that arena problem so in the end you're left with Malmö. I think it's actually been revealed officially now that Malmö was the only option or the easiest option for them in the end. We've also got the pattern that we seem to be following over the past few years. I talked about this in my last video as well about the host city not being in a capital city but a smaller city so we're still following that pattern of having it in a non-capital city from Rotterdam to Turing, Liverpool and now Malmö so we're definitely following that pattern and it shows that it does work I mean it worked well with Liverpool you know that was great so hopefully it will be a similar atmosphere to that and the good thing about Malmö is accommodation because you've got Copenhagen 20 minutes away on that bridge that connects Denmark and Sweden you can easily get from Copenhagen to Malmö and it looks like it probably happened in 2013 as well from what I've heard and it's definitely happening again where a lot of people if not most people <laughs> will stay not in Malmö, not in Sweden, but in Copenhagen and get the train over maybe even every night. <laughs> Just keep getting the train back and forth from Denmark to Sweden. And that is what I am really tempted to do because I'd love to go to Copenhagen. So I'm very tempted to make a trip out of this, have the chance to go to Copenhagen, stay there for most of the time and hopefully go to Malmö as well if we get tickets for any of the shows but yeah that is what a lot of people are doing and what I might do as well. I suppose the only problem with that is that Malmö which is the actual host city 
I'm missing out because everyone's going to Copenhagen instead. But that's what you have to do, you know, that's how it goes. In fact, I think it's probably easier to fly to Copenhagen anyway. So if you're there, you know, you may as well make the most of it and visit two countries, <laughs> Denmark and Sweden, at the same time. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so there we go. We are going back to Malmö, just like 2012. After Levine Wings, we're going back to Malmö. It's happening again for the third time. So let's help Malmö do a good job passing from Liverpool to Malmö. They've got a lot to live up to because this year was a very special Eurovision for a few reasons for UK fans who were able to go. It was the first time that I went in person, my first ever Eurovision I attended, so it will always be very special to me this year. So that's one reason why I think Malmö has a lot to live up to. Also, I think this year was special because of the whole situation, you know, it was on behalf of Ukraine. Yeah, it was just a very special, memorable year this year. And in terms of quality of songs, it was one of my favourites, actually. 2023 was one of my favourite Eurovision editions ever. On the same level as 2021, I would say... I'd say it was better than the year before, 22, better than 2019, I think, yeah. This year was one of my favourites for personal reasons, but actually being there in person and, yeah, it was just a, a great production, a great show all together. So hopefully Malmö will be just as good. I'm sure it will, because I know that Sweden, they take it very seriously. You know, they've got Melody Festival and as well. 2016 was, you know, it's known for being a good host for Eurovision. So I think Sweden can put on a good show and really embrace it, hopefully. <laughs> so let me know what you think of our host city of Malmö. Is it what you wanted, what you expected? I think in the end, it was what we expected. It wasn't really a surprise after finding out the problems with the other cities, you know, I think in the end, it wasn't really a surprise that it's Malmö. Are you happy with it? Are you thinking of going? Were you there in 2013? If you were, let me know what that was like. I'll be doing more videos, of course, in the next few months as we start getting more information. We have got quite a bit of news over the past few months about Luxembourg, having a national final, a few other countries as well. Junior Eurovision will be starting up fairly soon over the next few months, so I'll do a little bit on that as well. And I just can't wait to start a new season all over again. But actually, I say that I can't wait, and that is true. But there's a part of me that doesn't really want to leave this year behind, like the songs this year was so good, one of the best ever, I think. The relationship and the friendships between the contestants, you know, such a good, fun bunch of people, Liverpool, you know, the whole show in general, you don't really want to move on from that and leave that behind, but every year we do. So thank you all for watching as always. I look forward to starting all over again. I'll see you very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.